This is the Lineheart Creations Avelina Mark II. This is a re-release, build 2.0. This is a concept plane. It's uh, basically it's all electric. It does have a uh, hybrid secondary charging system, which is a small biofuel-powered turbine jet very small. They're sold for uh, radio controlled uh, aircraft that are pretty big and this one uses a turbine like that to run a generator which powers it will uh, recharge the batteries after about an hour after about two hours. She has about three hours of uh, battery performance in the air until she's uh, her batteries run flat. She's a four place aircraft and she's got a composite fiberglass airframe and as you can see on the ground her wings are kind of drooped down once she takes off her wings will flex upwards like uh, any other composite aircraft with big heavy wings or an airliner there's a nice little back window there she has air intakes for the uh, Negev motors that are up in the uh, front cowling she has argon landing lights. There's a little lump there in the belly. It's like a little teardrop down in the uh, in the bottom. That's a uh, auxiliary landing skid. That's a solid aluminum casting. If you have to uh, land her, if you lose all your electrics, you can belly her in with your gear up, and that'll help to save the airframe. If you can land her smooth enough on the belly, it'll take the brunt of the blow. In the back here, you see a little chrome thing. It's sort of an oval. That's the tailpipe for the turbine. When your turbine's running, your exhaust gas goes out the tail instead of along the belly. Keeps the aircraft cleaner. The uh, aerodynamics are better. The uh, hot gases just go straight out the back. And let's see. And she even has a hood ornament. You'll notice this prop is kind of odd. This is actually a prop like what, what the um, de Havilland... Uh, uh, Q400, Q800 series whisper jets have. This is a composite uh, whisper prop. What it does is um, it enables, it cuts the air better and more quietly and so it enables uh, the vehicle to to be a lot more quiet in the sky. It's more automotive like. It's, it's like a, it just lowers all the total sound elements down that along with uh, electric motors she's very quiet so let's go ahead and go inside and here we have the interior of the Avelina as you can see let's zoom out a little bit it's very automotive like it's not at all like your average aircraft the interior from door panel to door panel is the same width as a Infiniti Q45 so when you're sitting in a vehicle like in this aircraft, you're not crushed up against your co-pilot. You're relaxed. You're not touching each other. You have a center, center console between the two of you. You have little drink holders. You have little snacky treats there in the center console. You even have a cup of coffee. But um, anyway, so she's she's very automotive-like. Uh, yeah, and she has a steering wheel. I wanted something that was very, um, very automotive. I wanted instrument pa uh, dashboard like an, a car that would be in an aircraft. You know, this is. I felt that they, uh, the aircraft industry was always way behind um, compared to the automotive industry, and this would bring it up to date. <clears throat> so anyway, here you see the uh, the steering wheel, and you're. Your first thought is, man, that's going to get in the way. I won't be able to see the instruments. And so I have something for that. You just go like that. Now she looks like some futuristic Cirrus. So let's go ahead and we're going to start up the uh, electrical system. Now she's an all-electric plane, so basically like a, a Toyota Prius, you're just going to turn on the main power button and it activates like your, your flight computer, the main airframe computer, um, your LCD screens, we'll go ahead and fire it up, we'll boot up the computers. So they're going through system boot up. 
Now let's look at the primary instrumentation. There's a lot inside this panel. Um, basically it's everything you're going to need to fly a good aircraft. So let's start right here in the center and this is your turn and bank indicator and you'll see there's a little avelina right there in the center with some uh, green neon bars and these will turn like if you're doing let's say oh, 30 degrees bank your little airplane will reach these little two points right here so that's your turn and bank here's your compass it lines the outer edge of your turn and bank there's your um, magenta uh, heading indicator this will also match over here in the um, in your info center in the HSI window your magenta heading will also be right there so that matches up and um, next this is a little icon for your autopilot this is the cruise control font this will turn bright green and let you know that um, autopilot is active when that's on and uh, over here these little words this heading, speed, altimeter, VSI, GPS, nav, ILS. These will turn green when each system is active. Like if you just got heading on and nothing else, this will be neon green. Blue is sleeping and neon green is active. This right here is your, um, it's a CRS. And these little um, dots right here in this green arrow indicator, that's for your ILS indicator. That's your um, guidance in. That'll show you if you're in line with the runway or not. Uh, that's like you've got one here, and then you'll have like a an ILS pop-up 3D window that appears here, and your plane will show if it's outside of the beam or right on. Anyway, uh, our next gauge is the VSI. VSI is right here. You have a, a regular sort of analog-looking gauge with this little blue triangle needle. This moves up and down, and uh, it's in lots of 1,000 feet. So you got 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. So 1,500 being a standard is right there, and you have a digital readout version of your VSI there. I used to have this airplane move as the indicator, but it just it got in the way, covered things up. It looked kind of goofy, so I've left this icon to be stationary. Just don't need, just don't worry about that. Right here is your landing gear indicators that show you if they're up or down. When they're up, they're sideways. You'll just see flat tires right there. And whenever your landing gear is down, they rotate downwards and you'll see the sides. Um, you see these little magenta locks? Those turn bright green when they're active. Uh, right now, your um, autopilot, your bearing, it's not locked. It's unlocked. So you see an unlock symbol. Your VSI climb out is unlocked, so it, you see that symbol. Same with your airspeed, your altimeter setting. These are all, you know, like um, part of the um, autopilot system that let you know what's going on. This weird thing is your draft turbine. Your draft turbine is this little wind generator that drops out the back, and it it um, uses the air to uh, recharge do some recharging to your battery system. Right now it says that it's up. Blue is sleeping, so the blue arrow, it's up. And the, this is like a, there's an RPM indicator here. If it goes into overspeed, you should raise it up. You don't have to worry about that. It's not integrated into the flight model. The um, If you go back over here, you'll see that same symbol, or a similar symbol. You see a little like prop. This prop is your wind generator, wind powered APU. And you just uh, click that, and if you go outside, you should see it drop it down. It's right there in the back. And it's spooled up and spinning when you're at good speed. The only time you use it, it's like a little tiny spoiler. The only time you'd use it is when you're like in descent. You're at, say, 15,000 feet, and you're coming into your location airport that you've been flying towards. Again, your descent, you drop that down. It helps slow you down in case you go into overspeed. And let's uh, let's go ahead and raise that back up. You don't want to have that down when you take off. You definitely want to have that up. You don't want to strike it on the pavement. The emergency brake is on. Parking brake, okay, just like a car. Parking brake is down here beside your seat. Just click that. That should now be off. It's gone. 
um, you've done your you're at zero knots this is your airspeed this is your heading this is your digital head uh, digital um, bearing readout over here is your altimeter and basically you have your, your small 100 feet readout um, right here this is your little green arrow gadget gizmo and this is your 1000 feet readout so as this baby goes around this one this one will be spinning as well and then in the center you also have your digital altimeter readout if that's easier for you right here is your Colesman you can set the Colesman in your information center in the settings Colesman set it to 9 or decimal 9 or 2 so you're good there also something neat that I put in here you have um, different wallpapers for the LCD system let's cruise through so there's a nice little blue color uh, let's say you're flying the uh, yellow plane you can turn that on if your eyes are just you know dealing with some problems with uh, like sun glare and stuff you can tune these to be brighter or darker there's some goofy little alien font things I threw in there and uh, let's see let's go back to the original and let's get out of that now this is an electric aircraft you don't have fuel tanks you have uh, battery power so I've done something like what cell phones have these are um, these are little battery symbols and as they get lower the um, amount of green in there depletes and then at halfway they turn yellow and at about 25 percent they're red so these these also are all used at the same time the grid is fully active I didn't put in a, a system that separates them so everything's locked in and constantly draining so all three of these will drain at the same time um, when you get to the end then uh, you'll just have these two chrome caps and nothing in the middle and you will run out of battery power when you're out of battery power these these um, screens will die so they'll be black and so you have you have some emergency instruments that pop up here and these are uh, these are auxiliary gauges there's your um, uh, your gyro readout your your altimeter and your knots you want to be sure to keep your knots you know within a good flying speed you don't want to stall her out up there so you've got your your airspeed indicator and your altimeter in case it's cloudy out so you got that and let's see now if you if you have the solar cells on the wings option active then oops and that's your glove, glove box glove compartment now let's say you turn on the your solar array look out on the wings you suddenly have an aircraft that has laminated uh, high technology um, solar cells and so there's your solar equipment and they're not wired into the uh, instrumentation so unfortunately they don't affect your um, charge during the flight it's so much so many things going on with this concept aircraft that there's no way to really put everything in it would take me probably a year to get everything functioning but uh, but at least it's flyable now this little gizmo this wedge that's your flaps indicator oh and on your batteries that's left center and right this is your flaps so if you drop your flaps down a notch you will see this drop down and oops oh I'm in slow sorry so um, as that you know moves down as your flaps move down that moves down and back up and so forth these little gadgets right here are your motors and they'll be spinning they're just basically icons to let you know that the motors are active and this is uh, M1 this is the Neg first Negev motor this is the second stage in Negev motor and this is their RPM readouts you'll notice that this one only runs at lower RPM ranges and when you get up to the higher RPM ranges this one will kick in and let's see what's about it this is your squawk this is your time um, down here you also have a clock 
and it does multiple things. We have your timer, this is timer reset. And uh, it has an electric taxi system where you hit push back, you follow these instructions, hit you click push back twice, and then if you want to go forwards, you would you would click this twice slowly. Click, pause, click, and then click forward and you start moving forward. And you'll move forward at two knots, very slow. So you can go to seven knots and fifteen knots. Fifteen knots in America is your standard taxi speed at most airports, so you're good there at fifteen knots. Let's go ahead and raise that. There's your air conditioning. This is your cow flaps, and this is your propeller. If I zoom out here, you can see that this actually makes no difference in the aircraft model also. As I just wanted this, and I wanted to incorporate it into some of the systems, and I didn't. Now, on this aircraft, you also have a bio turbine APU auxiliary power unit and this is designed let's say you land at an airport and they don't have a place for you to charge up at you land at a dirt strip or something or you're on a long flight and your batteries are getting low and you need to make it to the next airport you have the option of spooling up your APU it's a small turbine as I said and it resides up there in the cowling we'll just turn it on to see what happens It's very quiet. It's a little tiny thing. It's located up there. This turns bright red. It's got fire running through the turbine. It shows that it's on. And as it's running, this little fuel level will begin to lower as you're depleting the um, the biofuel. Biofuel fuel caps are out there on the wingtips. That's them there. So that's running. Let's turn it off. Let's go outside. I've got to hear it from the outside. And let's turn that off. This is not really used. This is uh, this is your emergency landing gear crank. This is stored away in the in the center console. And if your battery power is depleted and you need to lower your landing gear, you would get this out, pop it in this cap, and then just crank your landing gear down like an old Belenka. This is your throttle, this dial right here, and you just dial up your speed. Whoops, let's go ahead and hit the emergency brake. So this setting right here, this is like your approach speed, or um, like speeds in the 120 knot range. This is, uh, this is like economy cruise. This is fast cruise. You can actually take off with this, knot, with this power setting in most instances and this is outright full power both motors are at 100 percent output so you rarely need to use that and you would usually conserve your battery power by never going there you can do a performance takeoff if you wanted <coughs> by going to that setting but there's no reason to these are little rubber knobbies to help you grab the thing and then um this is like a little glow-in-the-dark disc, so in night flights, that's this is kind of nice. It's a glow-in-the-dark, or a illuminated, um, electrical illuminated dial. And let's see. She has music. This is your entertainment center. She supposedly has uh, movies. There's no real movies in here. There's um, internet. So there's like Yahoo, CNN, you can catch up on the news. Your passengers can. You don't want to do that while you're flying. Then um, stored data, like you can upload your favorite music from iTunes into this off of a flash drive. Uh, there's CDs. And there's music. These are just demos. And in the manual, it explains... It explains how to how to um, load up your own music into here. You have uh, five different choices of music. And uh, the rest of this is sort of all fake. This controls back seat, front seats, um, volume, speakers, and headphones. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, and when you want to turn on music, you left click it. When you want to turn off the music, you have to right click. So you would left click. Right click, left click. Some cool 
Cool Tunes. And then um, we'll just go back to home on that. And let's see, click this little thing. To click this to rotate. It's supposed to rotate. This doesn't actually work, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that. So unfortunately, it's, it's just for looks. Um, I sure tried to make it work. So we'll just we'll hide that. I showed you how to get coffee. You just click that. Your iPhone appears magically over here. So we'll just go ahead and hide that. Now if you want luggage, you click this button. And you'll notice in the very back, let's go ahead and slide sideways, that you now have lag luggage that has appeared in the trunk. So cargo area. So now we'll go outside and, oh, that should have appeared out there. There's a way in which, to, oh, tie down mode. Let's go to tie down mode. And close that. We go over here to settings, go to tie down mode, and now we have luggage and everything's tied down. We have little metal chocks that are on your main gear. The luggage has shown up. We have some nylon good tie down straps and you have little things in your scoops to keep the birds out. Don't want them making nests around your high output negative motor. Another neat thing is um, when you power down the aircraft let's go ahead and hide our luggage shut that and we're going to power off the aircraft. So if we go out here this pitot tube is supposed to disappear. It will retract into the wing there it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Oh, and also when your power is on, it's kind of a neat feature. If you open up the door, you have that little ding ding sound. So that's kind of neat. Drives you nuts after a while. You turn off the power and you won't hear that. And then, uh,. You also have you also have electric windows. It seems like they're a little bit out of sync. The concept aircraft is supposed to have dual pane side windows to help reduce the uh, sound, and this is actual glass. It has a uh, really thin high energy gorilla gra glass that would um, actually be part of the structure of the aircraft when the gla these windows are up and when this glass is in it's uh, all structural it helps to keep the aircraft um, from flexing you click these and your interior lights come on uh, right over here is this neat little HUD it's a pop-up and when you're just flying along well, let's say you tint your screen you can you have three levels of tints you can let's say that you're um, you're flying up there and you just want to watch your altitude that you're uh, on a descent you're at like let's say 12,000 you're trying to go to 8,000 you can have this up and you can set it to your altitude and it will um, sit there and you know you can it's easier to monitor with your eyes in the horizon in this readout right here I wanted to have it I did have it set to where it would scan and continuously change but if you were trying to look at it a certain if you went to look at it you know to check your altitude you had to wait until they had all rotated around back to altitude and um, once you saw it if you didn't see it quick enough it was gone and then you had to wait again so I ended up um, just changing it to a manual setup this, these are your speakers for the front area and your fuses. You notice how there's no fuses? So if you go over here and you click this, they're ingeniously hidden within the um, wooden trim thing. So that's kind of nice. So you have fuses, don't worry. Okay, I've slewed over to the runway and I've changed planes to the uh, red and white sport model and I thought we would take her up. Let's go ahead and show you what she's like to fly. And let's get everything set up here. Now you notice that the prop isn't running. We have an electric aircraft. And so they don't idle. 
you just shut them off when they're at idle they they spool down and so to show you we'll just uh we'll just give her a little power you can hear it it's really quiet they would a actual electric aircraft these are being built now today not this plane but many other like Sonics and uh, Boeing has research planes and so on and so they um, they actually have electric planes and they're flying and you can hardly hear them on the outside you mostly hear just the propeller sound but anyway so when you throttle off throttle back to zero she automatically shuts down so we'll go ahead and start that back up Let's go ahead and turn on our nav lights. These are our um, sun visors. They pop down if you need them. And let's go ahead and take off. Brakes are off. Let's give her one notch of flaps. Here's your flaps indicator. Motor one is running. Let's go ahead and go to three quarter power. Uh, let's go to full power. Let's check it out. Feel the power. And let's go lift off. We're at 100 knots. Let's lift the gear up. Flaps up. Designed to fly at 200 knots, so she'll do that. You'll notice that at full power, these little uh, caution blinkers pop up over the motors to let you know that you're running at 100%. You will heat them up pretty good, so we'll throttle back down. Let's go to fast cruise. That's pretty good speed right there. And as you can see, all the instrumentation is working. Your compass is rotating. You got your turn and bank indicator in the center of the compass. We're at 2,000 feet altitude. It's really easy to read these once you once you realize once you know where everything is. You can see everything that's going on. You know your your bearing is 201 degrees. You're still doing a thousand foot climb out, and you're at 2,300, 2,400 feet. Let's go ahead and turn on the uh, autopilot. And let's um, let's go for our heading. Let's do a quick heading. And it should have locked, and it did. So now autopilot is on. This green light is on. The heading shows a green lock, so the heading is locked. And also, any anything that becomes active and locked, the numbers will turn magenta colored. So she's now locked at 260, 206 degrees, 205 degrees. And um, let's go ahead and lock down our altitude as well. These are quick locks. Now if we wanted to dial in our altitude, we would use this dial right here. So let's go ahead and go to 2000. And click the center. And now she's set up for 2000 feet altitude. Over here, you're set up for 2,000 feet altitude, you're at 3,500. And so she'll go down to um, 2,000 feet altitude. So let's, uh, let's kill that and go ahead and quick lock it to what our present altitude. So now we're locked in at 3,400 feet. And so now, see that she's locked at 3,400 feet. This color is now magenta. She's got a quick lock, so autopilot is active. And so, we're looking pretty good. You'll note over here on the autopilot, uh, cruise control is green, your heading is active, altimeter is active, that's where your trim is set. No crosswinds down below, no side winds. Um, your CRS, you can actually turn that with your mouse wheel. If you were heading on a, ZR, on a uh, ILS approach, this would be your localizer, and this would show you if you were online with your ILS beam. 
and you can see the droid appeared so your your autopilot guy is is busy at work your flaps are up your heading is locked altitude is locked psi it's locked it's it's set at 0 3400 feet altitude so that is it that's the gist of of the aircraft here's your radios your com 1 com 2 you select your um, your standby you adjust that you just basically just right click everything and then to bring it over to active you just click over there and it switches back transponder is here and then uh, elements of, of the aircraft's flight like uh, your DME would read out your airspeed your location etc right there and these over here these are um, these are hyper jump icons that will take you between your avionics autopilot and your HSI so we go over here and we can quickly set up our, our heading, our CRS, our bearing. We can cruise back over here to autopilot, check everything there. We can do a, another hyper jump back to radios and reset something there, and then go back to the main page. So that's kind of a neat feature as well. It's a lot of nice little pre programmed exterior camera shots these wings flex as you slow down as you slow down you'll notice that they begin to droop when there's not a lot of um, speed and then whenever you speed back up That's a glitch in the system. Every now and then your landing gear will auto-deploy. It's built in for when you're at low altitude. For some reason, every now and then, they will deploy, and I don't know why it does that. But uh, anyway, with gusts and stuff, they will affect your wings, and you'll notice them um, flexing. They flex with the G-load, as well as the speed. It's kind of neat. If you watch them, they'll sit there and flex when you hit turbulence. Kind of flex them there. Love that. Nice and quiet on the inside. The aircraft is designed... Let's go ahead and go to slow cruise. The aircraft's designed so that it's so quiet inside that you wouldn't need to wear headphones. It would just be like your standard automobile. You would hear a lot of wind noise, and you would hear a little bit of the propeller, and that's it. And from the uh, from outside, down on the ground, it would be hard to hear these aircraft. It would just be visible, and you, you would probably hear the prop a little bit. Yet you wouldn't hear much else. I doubt you could hear the motors from the ground. Another neat feature about the Evelina is the um, the flight computer can automatically manage your landing gear being deployed or retracted. Um, right now we're at 122 knots. We can actually drop the landing gear. The landing gear is good for um, 135 knots, at which point the computer, when you go over that speed, the computer will um, automatically automatically raise the landing gear. We'll just check that out. Our speed's at 125. 130. And up goes the landing gear. And so that's kind of a neat feature. Also, if you're, you're over speed for landing gear and you drop it, you go to drop it down, you should get a, um, warning over your landing gear yeah she immediately raised it sometimes she delays and when she raises the landing gear sometimes for some reason I think it's scenery triggered 
you'll be flying along and the landing gear will drop. And I think that there might be some sort of spikes in the scenery that cause that because the code is, is pretty good. It shouldn't be dropping the landing gear. The landing gear will drop when you're close to about oh, 500, 600 feet off the ground. And then the landing gear will auto deploy. Now you'll notice also with your um, flaps, we're at 190 knots, it's pretty fast. If we drop the flaps a notch, you'll notice that caution sign, that caution symbol. So right now, you can't really damage the flaps too bad because under high speed, you do have uh, springs in the um, flaps. You'll notice they're, they're split flaps. There's little springs in there and uh, so they can't be damaged. So if you if you do have to use them, you can use them, but only in emergencies. But they're designed to be air brakes. She doesn't have spoilers. So you can use them to uh, decelerate with. You can use them for fast um, descents coming into airports. And another neat thing I have to tell you about is when you're doing a rapid descent, Let's go ahead and shut that off. Our autopilot. And one of the things whenever whenever you go into autopilot, if you just go into like um, altitude quick lock, she turns on her, um, uh, it's, this is your steering lock. It locks the wings so you can't um, turn. So And you can turn that off. So anyway, it's... Uh, Let's practice a, uh, a stall, and then let's practice a rapid descent. Now, remember that she's electric. Let's go over here and let's just do a stall. What I want to show you is there's a lot of these sound effects in this aircraft. It's good to know what each of them does. Let's go ahead and stall her. 160 knots. Let's slow her down. You'll notice the um, font turns red in your speed gauge. It's, it's your danger zone. It turns yellow when it's under 86 knots. Under stall, it turns red. Let's go ahead. Now the landing gear has auto-deployed for some reason. It's not supposed to do that. And now... Let's slow it down, and we're going to do a high-speed descent. Let's get her to about oh, 120. Let's go to full flaps. Full. We're at 93 knots. Let's trim. And now told you she's electric so that fan doesn't need to be running when you have zero throttle all right we're set up for landing we're at 114 knots let's go ahead and trim landing gear is already down let's just practice here we're gonna test the landing gear for its auto deployment let's go ahead and add flaps we're under 120 knots we're gonna go for two two notches of flaps let's go ahead and shut off the turbine I mean the uh, electric motor and there goes our landing gear Eighty-five knots. Uh, ding means that we're now under eighty-five knots, and you'll notice that the the airspeed right now is at seventy-four, and it's yellow font. We're under eighty-five knots, so it goes to yellow. Let's go ahead and give her some power. We don't want to go under sixty-five. She lands really smooth. She's a sweetheart. Let's go ahead and 
turn her off and let her float down to the ground. And that's how she lands. Let's go ahead and raise the flap so. is the Avelina. I hope you've enjoyed it. They're fun little planes. I've really had a fun time designing her and putting her together and testing it and building the gauges. That was pretty wild. A lot of work there. Love that little turbine. Love the sound. Love the steering wheel and a real car it's easy to see through the, um, the the steering wheel when it's you know everything's properly sized and everything and in this aircraft and in a flight simulator I, I think that if this were a, a car game it would also be difficult to see through the steering wheel unless it was set up different because your eyes and your perspective isn't set up perfect within the screen area in the virtual area so you just can't use that steering wheel in a normal car, you never really notice the rings of the steering wheel. You're used to look, looking either through or over the top of your steering wheel. So it never bothers you. But in a game, you know, there it is, and it's going to bother you. So you just hide that. Anyway, that's my girl. Happy flying, and thank you very much for watching this video.